Welcome everybody to the third of our sustainability seminars. So we've had a week of sustainability seminars um, to celebrate and talk about the launch of our new sustainability report. Um, and this seminar is all about organic ingredients, sourcing the best and most sustainable organic ingredients, how, where and why. And I'm joined by Pauline from Cosmos. And Pauline is our partner at Cosmos who has helped us with all of our registrations. And I'm also joined by Violaine Bug, who has worked with me for 15 years and is an amazing friend and colleague of mine. And we've been working together developing products. We developed, this is the fourth, we've worked on four ranges together now, um, which is amazing. Um, and she does all of our um, ingredient um, registrations with Cosmos, as well as many, many other things involved in creating new products. So she's our super team expert. When mm -hmm. Ingredients. So welcome Pauline and welcome Violaine and welcome everybody else um, who has joined us. So I'm just going to start off by explaining a little bit about um, our impact pillars and how this fits into our impact pillars and then I'm going to pass on to Pauline to deep dive into the Cosmos certification. What does it mean? Because it's a very, very comprehensive standard and a lot more than just how much organic percentage is in a product. So um, it'd be great for everyone to understand that more. Um, and then Violaine is going to talk a bit about some of our other amazing ingredients that have ethical um, stories attached to them. Um, and then um, we'll wrap up with any questions at the end. So, I'll just start off with our pillars. So um, we have created five impact pillars in our sustainability report to help understand our impact on the planet. So we have um, goals for each of those. Um, and we also want to understand where we are today. So what is our impact? So um, the five pillars are carbon, waste. Um, we've, called, we've called one of them clean chemistry protecting biodiversity and kind to all. And actually sourcing ingredients hits multiple pillars because um, it isn't just about um, clean chemistry, it's actually also about biodiversity and kind to all because there's it's sort of lots of different angles. And for each of those, we've set up um, a goal. So with clean chemistry, we want to keep our natural environment and our customers healthy with zero harmful chemicals and materials. So it's about what we put on our own bodies and then also what goes into the rest of the ecosystem. With biodiversity, we understand that when we source ingredients, there could be a biodiversity impact. So we want to help to preserve forests and wildlife um, to make our um, sourcing as sustainable as possible. Um, and with Kind to All, this is about the wellness benefits of the products we create, but it's also about how we do that in a respectful way and how we make sure we um, protect animals as well. So that's where our vegan and cruelty-free certifications fit in. Um, so in this area, in terms of what we've done so far, now, this is this is the journey that we think about when we think about our impact. So we think about it all the way from when we first um, source an ingredient, which is farmed. So that has an impact um, when it's farmed, particularly on biodiversity. Um, and then the ingredient makes its way to us and it gets formulated, filled, distributed. The customer uses it and we understand that the impact that our business has also has an impact um, all the way until the product is finished and the packaging is hopefully recycled. So um, that when we think about our impact, it isn't just what we do in our own studio, it's um, all the way from beginning to end. And we don't have a full picture yet of what that impact is. And that's what we're sort of working on over time. So we already know um, bits of our impact as much, and you know, we've published all of that in our report. And what we'd like to do is to learn even more about how the ingredients are grown and the um, how the, what the ethics look like in that supply chain. Um, so when it comes to clean chemistry, which is sort of one of the major focuses um, of this session, our aim is to keep our environment and our customers healthy. Um, there's also an angle which relates to water because water is a scarce resource, mainly not here in the UK, but across the world, um, water poverty will become an increasing problem um, over this century. And so how much water we use um, and making sure that anything that um, comes from our products doesn't harm the aquatic ecosystem is all really important. So those are sort of lots of 
important things in this area. So um, the major thing that we have done in 2020 is that we have uh, we've achieved Cosmos certification. So um, we've got 25 products certified at the Cosmos Organic Standard and seven certified at the Cosmos Natural Standard. And Pauline, I'm sure, is going to explain a lot more about what that means. So I won't go into that now. Um, as part of the Cosmos certification, there are lots of other implications of things that we are not using, which are worth talking about. So for example, we don't use any genetically modified organisms or nanoparticles, and they're not allowed in the Cosmos standard. Um, we use a, a mineral-based sunscreen ingredient, zinc oxide, and um, that's important because some of the chemical-based sunscreens can be really harmful, particularly for coral reefs and aquatic um, ecosystems. Um, we're trying to use organic ingredients wherever we can because we believe that they are better both for people's bodies as well as for the ecosystem. They don't use um, very many pesticides in them and that means that there aren't as many contaminants um, in the products um, for our bodies and the ecosystems to deal with. Um, we've never used plastic microbeads which are a concern now because they go into um, the water system and cause lots of problems with toxicity. Um, we've always used upcycled particles. So we use upcycled coconut shells in um, our, our chocolate mask, in our radiant glow mask. And then we also use organic sugar granules in, um, in our body polish. So we're not using those um, because we know those can be a problem. Um, and the other important thing that we do is that we, we do use plastic packaging. We talked about it a lot yesterday in the session where it's, um, we, we use it where it's um, safer to use it. So we don't use glass um, in, in shower products because we don't want them to smash in the shower. Um, we only use um, poly, poly, what's it called, PET, which is polyethylene, something <laughs> and polypropylene um, in our packaging because we know that those are do not sort of react when they come into contact with um, products whereas other types of plastic particularly vinyl plastic can cause contaminants in the product so that's important we tend to use glass in most of our products as um, as wherever we can and um, so that's what we're doing at the moment um, and what we really want to do is to certify as many of our products cosmos as possible um, and then in another area, in the biodiversity area, one another thing that we're planning to do this year is to move our cartons from a craft, we're using an FSC certified craft paper, which is recycled, but we're actually gonna be moving to a grass paper carton later on this year, which is super exciting because it has an enormous um, benefit from a biodiversity perspective. It doesn't take any trees out of the environment. Instead, it uses grass, which is a fast growing resource. Um, and there's some pictures of it later on in this um, presentation of how beautiful it looks as well. So um, that's kind of our future plans. I think there are other future plans we haven't written down here. So things to do with using less water in products. And those are sort of, we talked a bit about them yesterday because they relate to waste as well. Um, they're sort of longer term projects that we don't really have a um, deliverable date on yet. So um, they're not happening this coming year, but there are lots of other things that we would like to do. Um, and also um, with the biodiversity angle as well, there's lots of things we want to do. So um, I'm now going to pass on to Pauline um, because this uh, there's three slides here all about um, Cosmos and about EcoCert. So um, Pauline, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Thank you for inviting me to participate to, to this uh, event. So um, yes, I, I'm from the EcoCert group. I'm working at the EcoCert group since more than 10 years now. So we have been involved in the field of natural and organic cosmetics since 15 years, uh, 15 years uh, now, uh, with the launch of the of EcoCert standard of certification in 2002. Um, but in, I would say in the same years, we have decided to, to work with um, other experts on the natural and organic certification um, in, in Europe in order to create the Cosmos standard, which is an international certification standard that we, we have harmonized our different standard in order to have just one unique standard. And uh, we are one of these funding members with other um, European partners. 
up to date, uh, in 2020, we have uh, there is more than 20,000 products that are certified worldwide according to the, the Cosmos standard. So we are really proud of these good results. That means that many companies are um, taking the right way, I would say, in order to uh, to act um, on the uh, on the directly on the environmental protection. And on these uh, 20,000 uh, products, we uh, as EcoCert represent uh, almost 60% of the market share. That means that as we were one of the, the first, the, the pioneer on that, that topic, it remains um, uh, the, we, we, we are still the leader. And, and this is also because we are um, present worldwide uh, through the, 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 um, our EcoCert network. We are present in, in 26 countries in order to have um, the full follow-up of the supply chain on, on raw materials, namely. But something I wanted also to share with you is that the, the Cosmos standard is not uh, settled uh, once for, for every, um, for always, I would say. It's an evolutive standard. Uh, we are currently uh, certifying products according to the th third version of this standard, but we are currently working also for the next version, the V4. And in this version, we would like also to continue to move forward in, in asking for more sustainability, uh, for less, um, I would say, uh, chemical ingredients, uh, because we know that there are many innovations on that topic. So that's why we are, con we are continue to, uh, to make it uh, live. Then I, we can go to the next slide. Um, in terms of sustainability, uh, an important point of the Cosmos standard first is its voluntary approach. That means that there is no regulation for natural and organic cosmetics. And that's why it's important to have private standard to, to fill the lack of regulation on that topic. It's, so it's a voluntary approach, but it's also a holistic approach. That means that the, the companies who are engaged in this or commit to, to comply with the, the, the Cosmos standard will need to have a complete a rethinking of their their way of producing and 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 imag imaging their their cosmos uh, their cosmos product. So here you have a a, a detailed um, view on the different life on the different steps of the life cycle of a product from product design to end of life, uh, going through raw materials, production, packaging, transport, and and also the use. And at the Cosmos, uh, what we would like is to, to be sure that we will address the main step, the main impacting steps uh, in order to, to promote sustainable, responsible, and also environmentally friendly products. So for the product design, what I told to you is that this is a voluntary approach, but it engages also the supplier and all the supply chain, the, the manufacturer, the, the raw material manufacturer, and, and I would say the former if it's not the raw material manufacturer. So the complete chain is involved in it and the certification, organic certification is working because all the the partners through the supply chain are uh, sharing the same values, I would say. Then a second point is uh, on sourcing. Uh, this is one of the most important points and the most demanding point of the, uh, the Cosmos standard because we, are, we have strong criteria, first by with the promotion of organic farming, but also on, on all the raw materials that are, that are used within the Cosmos standard, it, it is required that we will look at the origin and the processes and the auxiliaries and, and so on. That means that for each raw material, we will make a study to check if it's comply or not to the, comp uh, to the Cosmos standard. Uh, then another point concerning the production itself of raw material or the, the, the final product, we have introduced the, the theory, theory, I would say, of green chemistry. Uh, the green chemistry is the concept on which uh, that, that promotes the best practices in terms of production of uh, chemis chemical um, molecules. So for sure, for green chemistry, we are talking about natural origin molecules on which we will have some criteria in order to be sure that we will have the most efficient processes that consume the less water possible or that producing the less waste as possible. And also that it will bring, it will lead to biodegradable, uh, biodegradable uh, raw materials. So that's one of the, uh, the criteria on the, on the raw material that we have also. 
And concerning the, the production of um, cosmetic product, we will look also at the cleaning product that are used during the facilities because our idea is to say, okay, I would like to produce cosmetic product, um, nice cosmetic product with natural and organic ingredients. But if it's required to use much more uh, cleaning products during the manufacturing of the product, it becomes a bit uh, pity. So that's why we are also uh, have we have also criteria on cleaning products. Then uh, some uh, a point really important, and I think also um, for the consumer, it's really important that that we look at the packaging. We have criteria on packaging on materials that are used uh, in order to create the packaging, and also we. We, um, we would like the companies to, um, to commit to have an improvement uh, way of thinking for packaging, because we know that what we have today would be possible to be uh, improved in the, in, the, um, in the next year. So that's why we would like each company to have, uh, I would say, um, uh, an approach on in, in which they can they always think okay I can I can go to this new material because it's better for the environment okay I can use less plastic or I can perhaps have refill system or something like that so that's why we are uh, asking companies to commit themselves in an improvement um, basis for sure we have no right now not fixed that we would like to have I don't know 30 percent of the plastics coming from recyclable sources or something like that perhaps it's something that we will implement in the future but right now we ask on, on that topic on, on a voluntary approach and then um, uh, what we ask for each company is to have an environmental management plan and I think it's really important that we cover all the steps the waste the water the energy the packaging in order to be on the on um, to, to that each company feels responsible for all the steps in order to be sure that they will address it try to manage it on the best way that they can uh, I think it's really important also that our standard is adaptable on the means of a company for sure uh, when when we have huge international groups and little soap maker we, we cannot ask for the same uh, i would say stream of development or the sa same growth or the, the the same improvement system but we want everyone everyone to be involved in it so this is the idea and that's why we ask also for for uh, this environmental management plan on, on which we will see the improvement process now we can move to the the next slide in order to go uh, deeper uh, in the in the differences in the two levels of uh, uh, cos the Cosmos standard. So we have two levels of certification, Cosmos natural and Cosmos organic for finished product, but they all guarantee uh, the same uh, basic requirement, I would say basic, even if it's already engaging for a company, but this is a same, the same basis of a really uh, important commitment for the processes, as I told, the, the use, the restricted use of petrochemical ingredients. The fact that there is no synthetic perfumes, no coloring agent from, from petrochemistry. For sure, in, in, in Europe, there is no animal testing. This is something which is very clear, but this is not the same level of guarantee worldwide. That's why we continue to, to keep it in the Cosmos standard, because it's not something, yes, which is uh, um, a higher requirement in Europe, but in some countries, this is still uh, an issue. Um, for Cosmos Organic, I will go deeper on Cosmos Organic. For sure, there is um, need uh, to, to, to uh, supply or purchase organic ingredients uh, in it. Uh, but for both level of certification, there is no GMO. And this is also an important point because we feel that to have, uh, I would say, the ecosystem preserved, it's important not to promote such, uh, uh, orga organi uh, such agriculture. I've already talked about the other points, which are the basics of the, the Cosmos standard. So if a company wants to certify a product according to the Cosmos natural level of certification, they need to provide all the information related to, to the ingredients, formula, labeling, and so on. But for the ingredients, the only requirements would be that they are from natural origin. That means that there is no level of organic inside. We are only promoting the fact that all the ingredients are from natural origin, except 
those listed, that means only some uh, preservatives that are really useful in order to be sure that the product will not uh, will be safe, I, I would say, for the consumer. Then for the Cosmos Organic uh, levels, or levels of certification, there are additionally two other uh, important requirements. I will talk first on, on one which is not um, easily uh, understandable on the, on the label. This is the one concerning the content of ingredients from, that could be organic. When we look at the cosmetic product, there is water, minerals that cannot be organic. So we don't look at this one. We will look at the vegetable ingredients or the, uh, some, some uh, animal origin ingredients such as milk or Mel, honey, but I'm pretty sure they are not inside. The, I'm not sure, but I, they are not inside your product. So we will look at all the ingredients that could be certified according to the organic farming regulation. And here on this set of ingredients, 95% of this set of ingredients must be for, from organic farming. So this is a really demanding requirement because we will see say that all the ingredients that can be certified according to the organic farming must be certified according to the organic farming. So this is the first requirements. And then we will look at the entire product. And here we have a percentage of the total ingredients that must be from organic farming uh, origin. This is 20% for leaven product and 10% for rinse off product. So if we look at the entire product, we could say, OK, it's not really a high amount of organic. But if we look at the other requirements on the what can be organic that must be organic, then it's really demanding with 95 percent of vegetable ingredients. So here are the, the two requirements of the Cosmos Organic. So if you look at the product which is certified according to our standard, you will have the transparency using uh, since uh, thanks to the uh, percentage that is written on the product you will see the total ingredients that is from natural origin and then the total ingredients which uh, which comes from organic farming and it helps consumer to be sure to have to, to do the selection to be sure that they will have the right information on the product i am finished with Thank you so much, Pauline. That's amazing. Um, really, really clear. I'm just going to open the chat to see if anyone has posted any questions. Um, I have one question that was posted directly to me, and I'll bring Violaine in as well for this. Um, why are organic ingredients better for you in skincare? So I think that's a really interesting question. Um, and I have a view on it, but maybe first let's hear from Pauline. What does EcoCert think? Why, do, why is organic important for skincare? So I think that um, th there are two, uh, two levels, I would say, to answer to this question. First, for, first for the consumer who will use the product, was we, what we know is that from organic farming, the organic farming way of production may conduct to um, a higher level of uh, actives within the within the vegetal plant and that's the the some molecules will be on better quality this is the first step and a second step is that by by using organic farming ingredients you will also contribute to a better environmental protection of the whole supply chain of the product Yes, that's what I, our researchers, um, we've been looking into this from different angles as well. And what we found um, was that there was a lot of information that um, growing organic, growing organically actually really promotes biodiversity. Mm -hmm. It's good for soil health. Um, and that also, I think, helps to um, lock more carbon in from the environment. So actually, when you look at our impact pillars, it hits almost every single one of them because it helps on the carbon. It came up, up five times when we wrote our report. It, it helps with carbon. It, it helps with biodiversity. Of course, it helps with clean chemistry because it's, it's, good, it's better for, for people and for the environment not to have the pesticides. 
Um, and so it sort of helps across the board. Um, so if anyone else has any other questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, but what we'll do is we'll keep going and then um, we'll, we'll move on now and start talking a bit about some of the other things that we're doing on top of the Cosmos standard. So um, we've started connecting with our suppliers to really understand where all of our ingredients come from. Sometimes it's opaque in the cosmetic supply chain and it's hard to know. Um, and we want to spend more time mapping our supply chain. We have over 180 ingredients, so it's quite a big exercise, but we're hoping this year to do a carbon footprint for those ingredients and to start understanding um, all of the ethics in all of the, you know, the way things are grown. What we have got so far are some amazing stories about some of the really lovely ingredients that we're using in our products. And I'd love it if Violaine would like to tell some of these stories for us. Yeah. Violaine, do you want to take yes, over? Absolutely. Um, so in this presentation, we um, really wanted to highlight some of the stories of uh, some of the amazing ingredients that we use. Um, and the first one we want to talk about is the Peruvian maca. So maca, I mean, in itself is a really interesting ingredient um, because, I mean, it's been used by um, Peruvian tribes for thousands of years. Um, it's been known to stimulate cellular renewal um, boost energy and endurance um, and also reduce the appearance of wrinkle and boost luminosity. So the ingredients is, um, that we use is certified by Fair for Life. I mean, Fair for Life is actually an EcoCert eco certification. So I know um, Pauline knows um, um, a lot more than me on, the, on this, but uh, from what I'm, I can, and know from our supplier, um, it guarantees uh, quite a few things and it guarantees a fair purchase price. Um, also a protection system for the production, uh, for the producer in, in case of crisis. Um, and also decent and safe working conditions throughout the supply chain um, and environmentally friendly agricultural practices. So the supplier that we, we use for, um, for Maca is called RAN. So RAN, um, I mean, they believe in responsible sourcing, um, giving priorities to endemic, endemic species. They, um, they respect traditional farming practices and they keep alive the transfer of know-how, um, including how to wash and dry the, um, uh, in high altitude. So, um, I mean, we love using this ingredient because of the um, amazing efficacy uh, that it has, but also the, the great, it has a great sustainability story. Um, so Laura, if you want to move to the, the, the next one, the next ingredient that we highlighted in this presentation um, is flaxseed. Um, so flaxseed we use in, um, in most of our um, body lotions. Um, again, um, it's been used for thousands of years. Uh, the grain apparently <laughs> was amongst one of the first crops to be, uh, to be grown in a human civilization um, and has apparently been consumed by people since uh, 1200 before, uh, BC. So um, uh, it's hydrating, nourishing, um, reduces, sensitiv reduce, uh, reduces sensitivity and improves um, barrier function. I mean, there are endless you know, benefits to flaxseed oil. I mean, the one that we use um, comes from China, um, where our partner there focuses on the fair treatment of farmers and workers um, in their factories, but also amongst the supplier that, that they partner with. So they, they're currently um, working towards obtaining a social certification to guarantee all those um, labor standards. Um, and then Laura, if you move to the next to the next one, we um, the one that we've selected. Um, I mean, it was really hard to only select three ingredients because we've got so many with some really great stories. But this one is really close to our um, really close to our heart. I mean, it's a. Um, so argan oil um, is a real favorite of ours. We use it in so many products. I mean, we, we've only listed a couple of products here, um, our Daily Renew and our Miracle Facial, but we also use it in our gold mask, in our iron lip contour, hair elixir, True Balance uh, facial. I mean, it's a, um, it's a real, real favorite and rightly so. Um, I mean, our argan is rich in vitamin E, fatty acid, it helps repair um, damaged skin. Um, it's antioxidant, it pro improves skin elasticity, but also great for, um, for hair um, health. So argan comes from um, Morocco, so from North Africa. Um, the raw material itself uh, comes from women association and, and co-ops. Um, the main objective is to, um, uh, to contribute to the preservation of the argan forest. 
um, but also improve the economic and social condition of the of the members of the cooperatives. Um, our, our partner there um, also focuses on, I guess, on developing and, and working on, on literacy, so working with women um, um, from the local villages. And they also extend activities to the production of uh, organic honey, but also byproducts of, um, of argan. Um, so I think the, if you move uh, to the next slide, it's um, uh, all about um, palm oil. I mean, the, the quote there is, um, is quite scary. I mean, it says the global cosmetic industry uh, contributes to the loss of 18 million acres of forests uh, per year. Um, palm oil is used in 70% of personal care products um, and that's a, a major source of deforestation. I mean, palm oil, in itself is a really tricky issue um, because although you know we do not add you know we don't add palm oil to our products a lot of our the a lot of cosmetic ingredients available to us um, on the market are palm oil derived so we work really hard to either use palm free alternatives um, or use ingredients that contain sustainable palm oil um, so we've we've almost managed to switch um, our palm oil or our palm containing ingredients to sustainable um, palm oil. So the, it's called RS RSPO palm oil. So that's the round table on sustainable palm oil standards. Um, so I can go through what the standards mean, but um, they, there's eight of them. The, for, the first of all, the first one is commitment and, and transparency. Um, then there's compliance with applicable laws. Um, commitment to long-term economic and financial viability, uh, use of best practice by growers, um, there's also an environmental responsibility, um, responsible consideration of employees, um, responsible development of new planting, and then commitment to continuous improvement in key areas um, of activity. So, but yeah, yeah, maybe uh, Violin, uh, I have not precise that the Cosmos standard requires that the, there is a, a certification program and a RSPO certification from the, 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 the palm oil derivatives. So we want to move forward in that direction. And this is true that this is a tricky issue because many raw materials come, are derived from, from, from this raw material. So we are acting on that and it's important that everyone can move into that uh, better practices on that subject. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, Laura, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. And we talked about this in our Monday seminar as well. And we were talking about if you move away from palm oil, then what happens? Because I think the other thing to consider is that we don't want to then switch the problem to another raw material like coconut or something else. So making sure that it's not because palm oil is a very the reason it's used is because it's a very high yield ingredient you get a lot of oil out from the palm but the problem is it's grown in sort of really rigid plantations and they chop down really biodiverse rainforest um, to plant those plantations and that's the problem with it um, but I I've read that there are concerns that you know coconut might be the next problem because it can be farmed in an unsustainable way as well so it's important to be holistic and to make sure that all of the ingredients are sourced in a responsible way but certainly we've been doing a lot of work and EcoCert um, have sort of prompted some of it but we're also aware of the issues as well um, and we're trying to get it out of all of our um, get, get all the unsustainable palm out of all of our products. Can we move to the next slide? Let's see. So um, at the beginning of the presentation, I told you a bit about the grass paper. So this is a bit of a sneaky peek because this hasn't launched yet. But later on in the year, we are planning to move our craft paper into this beautiful grass paper packaging. So um, watch this space. Um, it has amazing benefits, as I said before, um, from, a, from a biodiversity point of view, um, which is um, really exciting, but it also helps from a carbon point of view, from a, from a water point of view. So across the board, it's very beneficial to use fast growing grass rather than using trees um, to, to make yeah. this board. So that's very exciting. Of water too. Yeah, 99.9% in water yeah and then um 97 yeah. production and energy saving so it's a really great um great move for us 
Yeah, it's really fantastic. So I'm just going to stop sharing now because we've reached the end of the slides we wanted to share. I'll pop back um, and share at the end to, to give you the um, seminar plan for the rest of the week. But for now, um, let's um, bring in anyone else who has any other questions on anything we've covered so far. So that could be anything to do with Cosmos certification, anything else to do with biodiversity and palm oil, or really any other um, questions that you have um, for Violaine and me and Pauline. If you want to put them in the chat, that's lovely. If you want to unmute yourself, feel free to do that um, and ask your questions directly. And if you want to send your questions privately, you can do that if you... Okay, we have a question from Jessica. Um, why are all ingredients why aren't all ingredients certified so customers know where they come from that's a good question i'm not sure i fully understand what you mean um and the light's gone off in here so now you can't see me that's really funny oh no there we go <laughs> oh why aren't all ingredients from all brands certified um I think it's just because it's really difficult. This is a very, I mean, it takes a, a lot of work to do what we've done so far um, and get the information for over 180 ingredients. Um, and that's why for us, it's still a work in progress. And we're also gaining all the certifications and proofs for all of our vegan and cruelty-free certifications as well. So it's, a, it's quite a time consuming process and we're really, really focused on it as a brand. And um, so, you know, if another brand doesn't have it as a high priority, then, you know, it, it's, a, it, it's expensive and time consuming, I guess, in terms of people um, and time. But um, we, we really passionately believe in it. So that's sort of why we do it. Yeah. And, and if we want to discuss in terms of certification from organic farming, as an example, it takes three years in order one one form uh, to be able to to reach the certification uh, among many other criteria. But we consider that the the, the uh, we it, three years are required in order to be sure that from one plantation they can convert to the organic farming plantation. Uh, by uh, du during uh, yeah the, a process that lasts three years in addition to the all criteria and pesticide and so on, so it takes time I would say to to convert mm -hmm. uh, from one uh, conventional agriculture to the organic farming one. That's really interesting, Pauline. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the other question and um, follow up question was, do you think in the future all beauty products will show where all the ingredients come from? I think the other problem is that sometimes it's quite opaque because for certain ingredients, they can come from anywhere. So sometimes we talk to like, suppliers and say, well, where's this glycerin from? And they say, well, sometimes it's from here and sometimes it's from there because it's a commodity material and it sort of just gets traded. Um, for some materials, like, for example, some of the amazing ones VLN was talking about where they come from a specific project, it's different and you can get certifications on how it was produced. And we want to try and move towards having provenance in all of our ingredients. But even for us, if the information isn't available, it's quite difficult to get the big suppliers to provide it. And they might not even have it. So they might buy glycerin or palm oil from the open market and make a surfactant or something with it or an emulsifier with it so they might not even know so the thing is it involves people in the entire supply chain doing that before it will be possible to know where absolutely everything comes from but i do think it's moving in that direction and certainly we're starting to look up our supply chain and you know understand we want to understand where everything comes from for lots of different reasons for carbon footprinting for ethical standards um, and just to make sure that everything is, you know, as we want it to be. Yeah, I think that there is also, um, uh, as you said, Laura, many uh, companies who are trying to improve this system. Um, you have heard about blockchain and the people want to, to give more and more transparency to the, the whole supply chain. But yeah. this is true that the, this is a, a mapping that has to be done uh, for every ingredient inside the formula. And this is a huge work. I think that we are moving in that direction because consumer does not want to, to have a black box. They want to have information to be sure that if they select one brand, this is because they are, rely on this brand on, on doing their best in the environmental issue, but on, on the other topic, topic too.
Yeah, I think Gabby, your question is really relevant. How do we know that all of our suppliers are in line with our values unless they do have some kind of certain welfare standard certificates? And the, the challenge we have, and we're being very transparent about this, is we don't yet. And that's what we're trying to do next is to try and understand that better because we do have certain welfare standards and we know that our customers also expect that those standards are maintained and so the opacity of the supply chain in in for some of those materials is a problem um, and that's what we want to do so it isn't perfect yet and we want to work to improve it and that's kind of why this is all a work in progress and we're sort of transparently saying that um, because we would like we would really like to know we would, would really like to know that it's in line with all of our values and be able to sort of prove that to everybody now, so that's kind of our project. The supplier that we purchase the ingredients from, um, they're, they're distributors and they, they would audit the, uh, you know, where the ingredients come from. So um, we have to just trust what the distributor says. Um, and we, you know, we work with them very closely, so we do. But um, yeah, this mm. is just uh, uh, the information that we get from them. Yeah, and there could be several steps in the value chain. So we often work with distributors in the UK and they often work with suppliers around the world. And there's a big variety of them. So some of them like RAN are really big professional companies who have loads of programs in place already. Um, and so we try and work with them wherever we can. But then for some materials, it isn't necessarily possible to get that level of transparency. So um, yeah, it's a project. And um, it might take us a while to get the information because we're still reasonably small. So even though we say we want to get the information, we don't always get, mm. we've been trying to get the information just to do the carbon footprinting um, and the, you know, and we're in the middle of doing our cruelty free international standard and we're pretty much there now with that. But even just getting documentation from them on materials when you're small is really hard. And Pauline will know this better than any of us because the organic, questionnaire you have to fill in for a raw material is incredibly detailed isn't it Pauline? Yeah that's it yeah you, this is true that uh, in terms of transparency uh, uh, Cosmos is also working a lot on that point because we are ask, asking from each raw material to be described by the manufacturer not only the distributor the we have a questionnaire with many questions inside and this must be filled in by the manufacturer of the raw material. So that means that we are, I would say, going as deep at, as we can uh, in order to, to have information from about the origin and uh, the process. And, and we have a chemist that uh, studied the answer to be sure that even if it's a declaration, this is the right one because uh, they have the expertise to say, okay, mm, it seems to be a bit strange to have such a process. So we ask more questions and sometimes we can, we can also so audit the company, uh, the, the, the ingredients we, which are certified organic are um, audited every year as, a, as every of our clients. So that means that we will also move forward uh, more deeply because we will go to the, to the manufacturing plant in order to see what would be, how is uh, processed the, the raw materials. I think that the more we can work with EcoCert and the Cosmos standard and other sort of recognized standards, the better, because, you know, a company has a big interest in getting their ingredients certified Cosmos because it's incredibly helpful. It means that they'll be able to market that to all of the customers that they have. And so, you know, if we give them a questionnaire to fill in just for Evolve Beauty, um, small as we are, they might just ignore it. But actually, if they need to fill in one for Cosmos to get their Cosmos certification, that's quite a valuable thing for them. So, um, you know, that helps as well. So the more we can do with the Cosmos standard, and there's already lots of questions in there relating to sustainability, as well as to the clean chemistry side of things, the better really. Um, so I'm interested in seeing what comes in V4 and whether there's any more sort of ethical labour standards involved in that too, because that will also help us when we're in our mission to understand our supply chain better. Yeah, and, and you know, for the, for the V4, we will also have a public consultation. So we will consult our clients on the, on the ID we have for the next version so that they could, you could also contribute to, the, to this V4. And everyone, this will be a public consultation so everyone can contribute. But I think that um, I am used to, I, I used to say that the, the 
the certification is a trust tool. That means that it helps any, any partners of a, a whole supply chain to, to have trust and to be sure that as there is a third party who will go and in order to audit and, and, and give this caution uh, on the, and the guarantee on the whole supply chain. So it's a trust tool and we, that's why we try to continue to develop the standard to be sure that the consumer can, can always trust the guarantee that they have on the label. That's brilliant. Well, I'm excited about that because I think that will be an, an amazing um, progression. Hopefully it won't mean that um, none of our products will comply anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the case. There is always transition for sure. Yeah. And, and, and the idea is to be sure that we will continue to evolve. The, it's not really uh, realistic, as you said, to have a really high standard of certification, but no product certified at all. So it's really important that we pull the industry, that everyone can go and move forward worldwide. It's important also that we, uh, we, uh, that uh, other pro uh, co uh, countries will join us in in this in developing uh, natural and organic cosmetics. But this, the idea is to pull the industry to better practices, but also to to be sure that support them in order them to be able to do it. Absolutely. So um, I think we, we're out of questions. If anyone else has a question, ask it now, because otherwise I'm going to share the information about the remaining two seminars, um, which are coming up at the end of this week. I'm just going to um, put that back on the screen so you can see them. Um, so, um, we are day three of a five day seminar series. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about carbon footprints and we're gonna be joined with, joined by Charlotte and Lorenzo who have been helping us with the mapping and the offsetting of our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, um, I will be joined by John Grant who is a good friend and also an author um, in the ethical business area. So he and I are gonna be talking all about ethical business and we'll be covering all of the pillars relating to kind to all as well. So if you want to join either of those two sessions, if you go to our website to Pages Sustainability Summit, you can register for those. Um, and on that same page will be recordings of all of these sessions once we've edited them. So um, I'll stop sharing there. And I would like to say thank you very thank much you. to Pauline and Helen for all of your time. It was a really interesting session. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for people's really thoughtful questions as well. Thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, and um, I'll say bye to everybody now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.